Hi guys, John the Firearms Instructor, and welcome to our live. It's Tuesday night, 6 o'clock. You know where you should be, sitting in front of your computer or your phone, and watching this live with you and me. We appreciate you here. We're a little early. I'm going to give a few seconds to let people pop in. We've got a great show this evening. Uh, we're going to be covering a lot of different stuff. Uh, we've got exciting news. I am an author now. We I just did a ebook, and I have promoted. We're trying to promote it, and we're using this live this evening to help promote this. If you know the drill, if you're on tonight's e on tonight's uh, um, podcast live, whatever you want to call this thing, live they call them the live podcast now because we are uh, using audio and video in this thing. So. If you're on it, please tell us where you're from. If you're new, let us know you're new. If you're one of our regular uh, hanger honors, we appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you very much for my family and myself for supporting a small family-owned business uh, through my journey through YouTube. We appreciate it very much. God bless you to the bottom of my heart. Well, it's been a decent week so far it's only tuesday i know my beautiful bride was off last week uh for spring break her and i got to go to the beach on thursday and i sunburned the top of my foot I had everything else covered but my foot uh but i got sunburned but we ended up enjoying it the water was cold we didn't get it too deep we did get our toesies wet uh, but the fort myers beach is strong as it can be i'm proud of those people down there they went through hell and now they're getting back on their uh, horses and working out pretty well. That's pretty awesome. Uh, uh, we are, um, if someone could give me a heads up or let me know you can hear me pretty well, we would appreciate that very much. We're going to try to get this uh, podcast live, whatever you want to call this thing, uh, to about 25 subscribe, 25 people watching it tonight. We're at six right now. Hopefully it'll get stronger and stronger as we go. Uh, we will be right back after these messages from our sponsor, Aura. Spam emails and everything else like that. Well, Aura is a company that will protect you from scams, frauds, and online threats. Did you know that one out of four will fall victim to some kind of online crime? Did you know that America lost over $10.3 billion on online crime? Aurora is a company that has an all-in-one protection plan for you. It'll keep your family safe from hackers, fraudsters, and online predators. Each plan comes with a million-dollar identity theft insurance. With a single couple or family plan, they have one that'll fit your needs. Take advantage of the family plan because it'll protect up to five adults and it includes children. Uh, if you'd like to, Aura gave us a special deal that we're allowing you to take a 14-day free trial by clicking the link above. Protect yourself with Aura. All right, welcome back. Aura is one of those companies you got to make sure you protect yourself. You know, one out of four of us are going to refine ourselves to some kind of online crime. How to me last week. Had one of my credit cards sabotaged. Uh, and uh, obviously it's something that they they jumped on right away and took care of. Uh, that family of four is pretty cool because a family of five, they you do not have to live with each other to be in this system, and it protects up to 50 um, iPhones, iPads, anything else like that. And it's cheaper than two Big Macs and fries and a soda. That's the cool thing about that. If you take the 14-day trial and you don't like it for some reason or another, you do not have to pay for it, folks. But it's given me a lot of... I'm getting updates almost every day about stuff they're finding, whether it be uh, my Social Security card or one of my passwords has been comp uh, compromised. It's telling me stuff every day. I highly recommend you do it in the description and the, uh, the link. Uh, we're going to put that 14-day trial in there. Click on it, find out. Now, I haven't done a lot of what they want you to do because you could spend, you could protect everything you have, credit cards, your mortgage, your your title to your cars, your titles to your cars. 
I mean, they're uh, they're they're looking at everything in the backside of it, and it's very economical. I think a single is like twelve dollars, and I think the adult thing got to like thirty five or forty. It's well worth it, guys, to get an opportunity to take care of the sponsors who take care of us. We appreciate that very much. Okay, so we decided uh, about six months ago. I decided to write a book. And I started playing around with it. and I wasn't sure what to do with it. And I started looking through my YouTube channel. And I found a little thing that people were going nuts over. And I did a video about six months, seven months ago. It was why you shoot low and left. And as Jacob and I researched it, uh, we looked at, we had 10,000 views on two videos and almost 750 comments on those two videos and they were asking pretty much all the same thing why am i doing it why am i shooting low and left and no one could figure it out so i said you know what maybe this could be a good little thing to do so i put it together a little book that I kind of played with and I added to it and took it away. And Miss Johnson and Johnny, my son, and Jacob, we all kind of threw our heads together and kind of played around with it. And we put together six or seven chapters of why, what it is, what's the fundamentals of it, why it's happening. And you know, most people consume our product through video. But we, we started the podcast, a lot of people were consuming our stuff through audio, just listening to it. And those people started asking the same questions. So I thought what I would do is put a book together with a playlist of what the book is saying. So we have like 10 videos of why you shoot low and left and how to solve it. That's on a playlist on our YouTube channel. And then I put the book corresponding to that playlist as well as some other stuff. So I think you could be able to purchase the book, which is cheap. It's $9.99. It's an ebook, so you get it instantly. You're going to be able to read it. You own it at that point in time. And then you could go back and look at my YouTube channel and visually watch the videos that correspond to the chapters that are in the book. And I think this is going to be a neat way for us to educate you in multiple different ways. And it seems to me it's going to be a great option for a lot of people who are having problems with low and left. And, uh, you know, yeah, obviously low and left is normally a right-handed student shooting low and left. But it's a left-handed student. They're just shooting low and right. It's the same exact stuff. It's just the opposite side. So we put together it. I got it going through Amazon. I've got it going through my Shopify store. I've got it going through any of my YouTube videos. There's going to be a store below that will be able to click on it. And at that point in time, you can purchase it, download it, and read it and get yourself all. There's some pictures. There's some video. And there's some, um, um, uh, you know, um, chapters and things like that. And it's like a regular old ebook, so you could forward to one chapter go away from another chapter it's pretty cool i'm kind of mm, i'm kind of impressed by it to be honest with you i didn't think i could get it to that point you know it, it's not a 2500 page book but it is something and this is we call this the mastering your aim series and we're going to put together a couple of these the first one was why do you shoot low and left the next one's going to be grip why the grip is so important and then we're going to keep going. We're going to add to them. We're going to add to them. We're going to add to them. And we'll see what we come up with. I think it's going to help tremendously as a firearms instructor. You have multiple streams of knowledge for you to consume and uh, hopefully share with other people. And maybe maybe comment a little bit and let me know, hey, this is working or this didn't work for me. And, you know, especially in the Amazon thing, when you buy it from Amazon, you have to physically um, maybe um, – comment give me a review on the book and that'll help tremendously so we have a couple comments up here let's grab them real quick see where they are all right hello y'all okay 
good audio. Thank, thank you, Tristan. I appreciate it very much. Tristan, where are you from, buddy? Let me know that, please. We would appreciate that. So uh, let's go ahead and pull up the low and left uh, PowerPoint presentation. And we are going to start this this evening. And I know we've done a couple of different styles of this, but people keep asking about it. So we're going to keep throwing it at the wall. Uh, if you want to real quick, I'm going to go ahead and pull up our link to the the shop of five store which is on any of our youtube channels there that is there if you want to take your phone and make click on it or maybe maybe do a screenshot of that you'll be able to see it there but it'll be on the description of this in a few minutes here so you won't have a problem with that once this is over uh, so <clears throat> let's go ahead and i'm going to go full screen and i am going to stay off but i'm going to be able to still talk to you all right, are you tired of consistently shooting low and left with a handgun? Here are 10 tips to help you improve your accuracy. Now, most of you probably know a few of these, but there's a few in there that aren't uh, so common. Um, go ahead and comment below. Let me know if you're right-handed and right-eye dominant or right-handed left-eye dominant. That'll make a big difference on what we're doing this evening. There are 10, 10, 10 people looking right now, 10. We are, we are um, you know, we, we're going to get the 25. So hopefully, if you know any friends or family that are watching this evening and they're not watching, make sure you contact them to watch. Yeah, so shooting low and left is a very common thing. It happens to the best of us. It happens to me all the time. It's about how the gun's sitting in your hand. Uh, there's a lot of different things that correlate to shooting low and left. There's anticipation. There's Holding the trigger and pressing the trigger. We're going to cover all these as we do this this evening. But I think you got to get your head around it. Last time you went to the range, you can comment below if you'd like. Uh, last time you went to the range, did you shoot low and left? Or were you shooting high and right? Or were you doing something else besides that? Or were you just perfect? If you're perfect, that's awesome. I'm proud of you. You're one of, one of few. So, you know, shooting a pistol... Uh, there's a lot of little things that make the pistol hard to shoot. You know, one of the hardest things to shoot is a handgun because there's only two points of aim and those two points, uh, two points of uh, grip, and there's only two places you can hold on to the gun, and it changes an awful lot. So let's go ahead and the first one. And the first one is a little bit about the book. Uh, welcome to Mastering Your Aim, where we delve into the common issues shooting low and left with a handgun. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced shooter, understanding why it happens and how to correct it is crucial for improving your marksmanship. In this ebook, we will explore the reasons behind the phenomenon, dispel the myths, provide practical tips to help you become more accurate and confident with a firearm. And there's the link right there. Uh, it is not a live link through these PowerPoint presentations, but you could surely make a screenshot of that if you want to. In addition to this ebook, I have an entire playlist supporting this ebook and help you become a better shooter. Visit our YouTube channel today to check it out. And there's the book cover right there. And you'll find these on Amazon, you'll find them on our, our YouTube channel. And you will find them on any of our social media contents, whether we're on X or whether we're on uh, Instagram, whether we're on uh, YouTube or any of the Facebook stuff. We have both sides of that. So there are links there on each one of those. Highly recommend you take a look at it. It'll, it will help your accuracy. All right. So number one, no other number one tip is to check your grip. Now, today we had a guy in the range, and he kept digging his thumb. You check these thumbs out. You see how the thumbs lay on top of each other? If you're shooting a pistol and you're digging your dominant hand thumb behind your non-dominant hand thumb, like think, imagine if he tucked his thumb behind the other thumb, your non-dominant hand controls the weapon. And the more you try to sandwich the thumbs together, the more you're going to 
push the gun off to one level or another. And I don't know if you can visually see his finger there, his trigger finger, but see how it's more into the crease of the gun, crease of the trigger, and not the tip of the finger. You know, what tends to happen, if I can give you a calculation, is that all your power, all your strength, and all your control comes from your non-dominant hand. And your dominant hand just holds the gun. So if you think about it, my dominant hand holds the gun, my non-dominant hand controls the gun. Because if you look what he's doing here, he's getting double pressure with his non-dominant hand and half pressure with his dominant hand. And if you look at that pistol, it looks like it's level. And that's a key factor too when you're shooting. If you're using your wrist to aim the weapon versus using your eyes to aim the weapon or your waist to aim the weapon, there becomes our problem. Majority of people use their wrist to aim the weapon, not their waist to aim the weapon. And that puts that weapon at an angle that would be very challenging to be accurate, point on, and not shoot low and left. What causes most of your left-handed shooting when you're right-handed is having the weapon over your nose and not over your dominant eye. And I told you many times before that a firearm is a bully and it takes anything you give it. So imagine if this gentleman was not having his hands high on this weapon. Now this Glock he's got in his hand, if that, that dominant hand of his is really high on the tang. So he, he's not going to get any kind of muzzle flip backwards do the fact how high he is, but if you could imagine, if you could see daylight between his thumb crease, his dominant hand thumb crease, and the weapon itself, that would allow that front post to flip a little bit. So anytime you have the weapon in your hand, you want to check your grip and make sure your dominant hand is high on the back strap and it is supported, your supporting hand is snug against it. This grip you see right here, it's like a puzzle piece. If I re remove his non-dominant hand, there is a hole where that dominant hand leaves when it's grabbing a weapon, and that's where your non-dominant hand goes into, and it keeps that gap. If you pay attention to his non-dominant hand uh, first finger, see how it's laying underneath the trigger well? And it's not grabbing the front of the trigger well, like that flat spot there. And it's not underneath where you, your hand would be low and it'd be like teacupping. He's holding that gun and letting it place and he's controlling the weapon and keeping it from flipping. And flipping caused majority of the problems when you go to push this trigger that you don't push it down and to the left. Because remember, you're trying to control the weapon. And if you over squeeze with your dominant hand, the bullet normally will go right. It won't go left. Because if you grab your pistol at home and you squeeze really hard with your dominant hand, that weapon will slide off to the left, to the right side of the gun. So what tends to happen, someone pushes out in front of them and under squeezes with their left hand and over squeezes the right hand. That causes more of a problem. But if you squeeze twice as hard with your left hand, but no grip effect on your right hand, there becomes the challenge. So we want to use the best grip we can, high on the back strap, and your supporting hand snugging against it. That's tip number one. All right, here, focus on trigger press using the pad of your index. I probably have done 20 videos, 25 videos on this. If you pay attention to this trigger this guy's got in his hand today, uh, he's got the tip of his finger rolling into that trigger, and he's not down on that trigger well at all. A lot of people engage a trigger and slide their finger across that trigger well, which is the bottom piece, and that causes that gun to dip low. You want to be off the weapon, 
just using the crease of your finger, not the tip of your finger, to engage the trigger slowly back. Today we had a class with a young lady, and she kept slapping the trigger. She didn't understand what slapping the trigger was. And I was trying to explain to her every time she engaged the trigger, she was pulling it. And she pulling it. I don't understand what you seem to be pulling it. And I just videotaped her. This is the easiest way to see when you're doing something wrong with a gun you can't really physically see it. I said, go ahead, shoot. And I just videotaped her for a minute, minute and a half. And we were watching. I put it down to slow motion. And I was watching how much that gun dipped when she engaged the trigger. Matter of fact, she tensed up before she engaged the trigger, which caused the weapon to dip even lower. And there's where our start. We got start getting that low and left factor because she's driving the gun with her back and she's pressing the trigger with her finger, or trying to, but she doesn't press the trigger. She pulls the trigger and bam, you're pulling it down, you're pulling it down, you're pulling it down. And that just starts getting into that low and left, low and left, low and left. And it's very hard to get out of it once you start that because internally, you're you're, there's a monster inside of us, and each and every one of us is kind of like anticipating the recoil before the weapon goes off. And nobody would say, well, that, that, no, that doesn't happen to me. I guarantee you everybody has some anticipation. Even myself, uh, six months ago, Johnny and I did a video, and I was trying to explain to people about anticipation. And I actually had Johnny load my magazines. And I thought, well, I don't know if it'll get me or not. So I was just slowly engaging the trigger. But he sure did. He, I thought he put five rounds in the magazine. He only put four. And when I got to that fifth round, I actually jigged. It you know, got me a little excited because I was worried about, um, I was trying to anticipate the recoil, which caused a lot of the issues. So if you focus on trigger press, now what is a trigger press? A trigger press is a slow engagement of the trigger until the weapon fires. That's what we're looking for. And use the pad of the index finger. If you think about where your crease is and you think about the end of your finger, between your crease and the end of your finger is that pad area we're talking about. And then just slowly press the trigger back. And what we're trying to do is slowly squeeze it straight back and not av avoiding any kind of jerking or trigger or, or banging on the gun to cause it to manipulate. The more manipulation we have with the weapon, the more inaccuracy we're going to have with the weapon. Okay. So I put this drive... Drive, they're driving the pistol. This is kind of one of those deals where people don't understand what that means. We have to control. I want you to think back the last time you went to the range. I, I don't mean to keep talking about today, but we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight students today. And those eight students did everything they could to mess up. <laughs> They're all new, you understand? So they did everything a student would do when they're engaging the trigger. They pulled the trigger, not pressed the trigger. They didn't grip hard enough with their dominant hand. You know, many years ago, someone told me a very important thing, that you never learn from winning. You learn from losing. And if you kind of look, take that attitude towards firearms training, it helps out tremendously because as a firearms instructor, we are trying to get you to the point where you understand what a good shot feels like, what a bad shot feels like, and we want to be somewhere in between there. So when you go to the range the next time, I want you to think about how I'm going to control this weapon. And we really, when we talk to women, women only have a couple of ways of controlling the weapon. Because a man's pex is attached to the top of his chest. And we tell a man to drive the gun with his pecs. That means pushing both hands out, bringing them together, and pulling, pushing your two hands together. You'll feel your pecs engage. And most of your driving that weapon with your pecs 
the power comes from your non-dominant hand and it makes it easier to hold it hold it poorly and overpower it you know so you want to make sure that your dominant hand controls the weapon and your non-dominant hand holds the weapon for men we use our pecs for women it's about wrist and booty and i've told you guys this before but ladies it's about taking your dominant hand and pushing it out and pulling back with your non-dominant hand and we want to activate those back muscles and as we activate those back muscles we're going to put some pressure on that weapon and then we allow our nose to get over our toes this is where the butt comes out and then you just push the gun out and you're going to control it you must have good form it's harder to overpower a firearm that's the key thing because if you don't drive the gun you're not going to control the gun and this is kind of a screen i just put in there because i see it all the time where people i want you to think last time you went to the range did you have a level pistol or was your front post flipping or anticipating or ladies were you engaging the trigger and when you went to engage a trigger the front of the gun dipped when you press the trigger which is very common for ladies and you can't use your wrist to aim the gun you need your waist to aim the gun but when you let that trigger engagement come back and your wrist breaks during the shot that's where if you're driving the weapon properly ladies your wrist won't dip because you can't dip your wrist and drive the gun at the same time so these are great little tips when you want to control a weapon because if someone can't tell a woman to muscle the gun in their hands now listen ladies can do anything a man can do but the scenario is we need to drive those weapons no matter if it's a man or a woman to control it the only difference is with women is you using your back muscles where a man's using his pecs let's go to the next screen <clears throat> pay attention to your stance this is one of those things that drives me crazy here because a lot of people stand with one foot back or this foot forward or whatever they're trying to do or one foot forward to try to manipulate or anticipate the recoil which is causing more problems than uh then it's helping you so you want to like we said here before and if i kind of give you my vision of what you need to do assuming you have no shoes on and you're at the beach i want you to dig your toes in the sand and imagine you're digging your toes in the sand and then lift your heels up just enough that you won't fall forward but you shifted your weight transfer to the toes this is what we need to pay attention to getting our feet shallow width apart bouncing on our knees driving the weapon out nose over toes wrist and booty for the ladies uh hands and chest for the man and press the gun out leaning slowly keeping your feet shoulder width apart and lean slightly forward now what this does for us it transfers our weight to our feet as well as controls recoil management because the weapon wants to muscle you backwards. But if you're leaning into the weapon, you're going to control that recoil. You're going to control that recoil. So you could physically, if you pay attention, to Jacob, this is Jacob's feet here. He's got that one foot just a little further than the front foot that his dominant foot his dominant foot's a little back so the idea of this i would tell you is he does this because he's crazy no i'm just kidding <laughs> he does this just because he that's the way he's been doing it forever he's been shooting a long time this is what he likes uh, but his foot isn't all the way back behind it and he does give himself mobility idea of this stance it's an athletic stance the athletic stance gives us mobility. He can move right. He can move left. He can move forward. He can move backwards. Makes it simple and easy for you. This weekend, Saturday, last Saturday, we did a, an advanced uh, concealed carry course here. 
And one of the drills we were doing is getting off the X. And you had to get away at an angle and then get to cover afterwards. And when you have people standing in weird positions, you're going to most likely cross your feet, which could cause you tripping hazards, where if you keep your feet attached to the ground and just slide them backwards, chances of you tripping are going to be like less, less. So pay attention to your stance. Because, you know, if you really think about when I th- said this a week ago, two weeks ago, I don't remember what it was. Shooting is a foundational sport. And that foundation goes from the feet to the weapon. And from the weapon to the feet. And those foundation needs to be the same. Because if you mess something up in the middle of it, you're not really building the proper thing. Imagine if they put three brick walls up and they decided to do straw on one side because they ran out of brick. Is that house going to be strong? Is it going to be a good foundation there? Or is it going to be a challenge for that home? This is what we're talking about. So we need to get that foundation all the way through the gun and all the way back to you. It's key. We're at 11 people watching, 11 people. That's awesome. We appreciate that. Make sure you're commenting on those 11 people if you have an opportunity. Let us let let us know where you're, where you're from, if it's the first time you're on here, on any comments you have about this. All right, number four is practicing proper side alignment. We've talked multiple times about this, but realistically, we always want to cover. I, I want to kind of, we did this today. We, you know, many people think that the bullet flies in a straight line. It doesn't. It flies in an arc. So, you know, and the scenario is we want to ensure the front sight is centered in the rear notch. And if you pay attention to the back side of this Glock, what I want you to really focus on is the top sight, the one in the front, and the ones in the back. One is not higher than the other. I remember we talked about you can't use your wrist to aim the gun. Imagine if you had that weapon in your hand and you had that front post lower than your back post. Well, that's what's going to impact. And vice versa, if you had the front post higher and the back post lower. So I always tell people, imagine the front and back, just the top of it being level. And if it is level, the weapon is going to shoot level. The challenge most of the time, that sight system on a pistol makes the gun front and back level, but right and left, it levels it too. Check the negative space out between where the box is in the back and the front post up front. There's that negative space, and we got to make sure that that negative space is equal to the sides. Because if you have it closer to one side and not the other, you're going to have the angle out of the vice, and that's where the impact's going to happen. And this is normally what happens to people who are right-handed. They'll set the weapon in their hand. Maybe they don't have the gun directly down their arm. That's a good, that's a good way to think about it. I put the gun, put it in my hand. I want to make sure it goes down my arm, and it's not over my knuckle or it's not over my fingerhead. So you want to make sure the gun goes in your hand level. That base, when you go to engage a trigger, that's going to be the most level shot you can. Practice proper side alignment. You do to practice it. It seems like it would be elementary, but there is a lot of challenging. So we have recoil management. We have the control as well. Ensure the front sight is centered in the rear sight notch. So earlier this afternoon, a lady asked me, well, I can't really see my front post and my back post and the target. Well, you're right. You can't. Your eyes won't focus on everything. So let me give you a vision real quick. What you need to think about is you need to think about the back sight needs to be blurry. The target needs to be blurry. And the front post needs to be crystal clear. I want you to focus on that target, the best you, that front post, as best you can. Front sight focus is what we call this. You've got to make sure it's level, but you don't need to get super critical on 
up and down, right and left kind of deal. Because remember, level pistol shoots level, but you got to visually see it. Imagine at 2 o'clock in the morning, are you actually putting your glasses on to shoot the bad guy? Or could you maybe have to do it without your glasses on? And there becomes our little mm, things we're going to think about. You don't need it. During the class, in the tactical class we did on Saturday, we did a lot of drills called point shooting drills. And, and people get too carried away on a site on a system versus just point shooting. We don't need sites to shoot a pistol. The sights on a pistol are there for your convenience. That red dot's there for your convenience. But you need to know how to shoot the pistol without them. Just like if you're right-handed, you need to know how to shoot the pistol left-handed. And vice versa, if you're left-handed, you need to shoot the weapon right-handed. And that includes racking the slide and taking the magazine out. Because if you got into some situation where you got impacted by something and lost your dominant hand, but you're still in the battle, you need to figure out how you're going to run that gun with your non-dominant hand. And asking your left-handed students to do anything right-handed it's pretty simple and easy because most of the lefties are ambidextrous. Comment below. Tell me when's the last time you shot with your non-dominant hand. Maybe rack the slide or even took the magazine out with the wrong hand. Vice versa, right? That's kind of one of those things you need to practice on a regular basis because when you get in the critical defense situation, you're going to fall back to your weakest training. If that weakest training is a very lax luster, well, that's what you're going to have is lack luster, which is probably something you don't need because in a critical defense situation, you're going to, your mind's going to shut off. Your body's going to shut off all everything they don't think is necessary. So it's not going to be able to think like you would want it to think. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I want you to go home. Well, you're at home probably now. If not, you're getting home. I want you to take six or seven ice cubes. I want you to fill the sink up for the water. I want you to take those ice cubes, and I want you to put them in the sink with water. All right? Now I want you to take your weapon out, and I want you to put it on the kitchen table. Make sure there's no ammo in the room at all. No ammo. All right? Just an empty magazine. Now, I want you to put your hands in that water almost until you can't stand it. Mm, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes. Now I want you to quickly try to rack the slide. Or quickly try to load the magazine and see how numb your hands are. This is what we're talking about. This is the stuff we need to practice on a regular basis. Because in a high-stress situation, you may have numb hands. You may have numb feet. You may be cold or, or, or you know, stuff, stuff like that. These are things that have to be done on a regular basis. To make you more confident, you know, we got to practice it all, guys, because we don't know exactly what what it's going to be. All right, proper proper side alignment, very important. All right, all right. Number five is trigger control. We talked about this already, but it's a slow press. Just press the trigger to the rear without disturbing the front sights. How many of you dry fire? That's the key thing we got to get our head around. Make sure you. Spend some time dry firing, understanding how much trigger travel there is in the weapon, and get it back on a on a on a very clean, crisp trigger without dipping the front post or doing anything at all. That's important. Uh, most people don't spend enough time understanding how far the trigger needs to come prior to the weapon firing. The more you spend time doing that the more you'll understand the length or the trigger travel to get you the point. Now, when I take a weapon in the back and I push it out in front of me, I'm already pulling some of the slack out of that trigger. So when I go to full extension, I have very little trigger travel left, which allows me to keep the gun level and a smoother trigger engagement. Uh, that slow press is going to help make us more accurate than any kind of slamming of the trigger. You know this as well as I do. Any kind of manipulation of the trigger. 
causes a lot of cattywampuses. Cattywampuses? That's a pretty good word. I'm not sure if it's going to work for this, but anything you do to that gun, it's going to manipulate even more when you're actually slamming it or pushing it or pulling it versus just slow press, slow press. So what's that mean? Here's I'll give you a cadence drill. The cadence drill, I use this a lot in classes to get people to understand. The cadence is the speed I want you to engage the trigger. And it's a one, two, three. And what does that mean? One, two, three. That means one is sticking your finger on the trigger. Two is applying pressure. That means taking the slack out. And three is letting the weapon fire. And then as the gun settles, you're going to start that one, two, three again. That's what I do when I'm in the back there. One, two, three. The weapon engages. One, two, three. The weapon engages. You'll be surprised how accurate you can be in that. Because now you're working the system. You're working the cadence. You're working the speed that gets that trigger back very slowly and gets to a point where it's going to cut. And that shot should, at a certain point, you'll start understanding how much pressure I need to put on this trigger to make it cut or to make it fire. Number five, trigger, trigger control. All right. You know, a lot of people ask this all the time. Is, should I breathe? Should I hold my breath? Well, most new students, some of it happened this afternoon, yesterday too. The ladies turn around. And, well, at first they come into the gun range. They haven't shot a pistol before. They're white as a ghost. They're scared to death, which I get it. I mean, it's something that they haven't done before. They're nervous and everything else like that. But then as they're trying to shoot the weapon, they're holding their breath. And I, they turn around and afterwards, and I, that was good. Uh, but you need to breathe because I'm looking at them and they're red in the face like, they never, like they've been holding their breath there for five shots. And it doesn't seem like much, but when you got high stress and you're nervous and you're holding your breath, it becomes something. So there's an acronym that's used in the NRA in a couple of places, but I kind of put this in here. This is more in line of longer distance shooting, but breathe, relax, aim, and squeeze. You know, so squeeze, I kind of, I took this from the NRA because of, uh, it's the acronym they use, BRASS, B-R-A-S-S, breathe, relax, aim, and squeeze. So um, does it really affect you at 10 feet and 15 feet? I guess if you held your breath, uh, you could start heaving during shots and stuff like that. Consider taking a small breath, take a deep breath, exhale halfway, hold it while you shoot. Yeah, one shot, great. As you get further along, it could be a little bit more intimidating because you're not catching your breath well enough. But breathing control is one of the things we got to work at. The more comfortable you become with the firearm, the more confidence you build, the less anticipation you're going to have. And this is where they blame it on the breathing. They blame it on a lot of stuff. But the majority of the time, it's just not feeling comfortable with the weapon, what causes most people to have some inaccuracy with the pistol, whether they're slamming the trigger or pulling the trigger or just manipulating the weapon too deep in. And just getting in, just just becoming more confident. With confidence comes accuracy. I promise you that. Once you get comfortable with a weapon, accuracy will not be a problem for many people. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's mathematics. There's a lot to it. Once you get it, you got it. And that's the cool thing about working with an instructor, because an instructor will help you through all these little tiny little tricks to make you a better shooter. All right. Uh, relax your grip. Avoid gripping the gun too tightly. This is this this is kind of one of those weird deals, which can cause the shots to be pulled low and left. Now, pay attention to this grip here, and that's kind of what I was showing you before with the proper grip on the other side. This grip, Jacob, 
has his thumbs crossed. He has his dominant thumb, dominant hand thumb, buried underneath his non-dominant thumb. Which, if you think about that, if you look at his non-dominant hand and look right where his thumb is and his trigger finger would be, right? Look at that big gap right there. Do you think he's going to have good control of this weapon? Do you think he's going to get that dominant hand to really hold on to the weapon with his non-dominant hand and having that big gap? You know, we got to make sure we're gripping that gun as well as we can. There is, we need to get as much meat around this pistol as possible. And just for the hell of it, I'm going to back up to show you the other uh, grip. That way you can see it real quick. There is the tight grip one. Let's back up here. And let's see if I can get back here that one that we had. Boom, 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 boom. What's happening? Why is it doing that? Seven. Tip three. Okay. Tip four. Oh, I retarded this message. One second, folks. Let me back out of this real quick. I can get a show there. There we go. See that thumbs? Those thumbs right there. Let's back in. See how those thumbs are touching each other? There's no gapping center here. And if we go back to that one that we just had a second ago, look at that. See the two differences? That you can see right off the bat that this grip would not be very good for shooting because you're not going to control it. Do me a favor. Go ahead and comment below if this is your grip. This is your grip. We can fix you pretty well. Most people can shoot a gun like this. Most men can. Most women won't be able to because they can't control the weapon well enough. Men can shittily hold the gun and shoot it okay, or a woman has to really work at it. And that would be very challenging for anybody to really become more proficient, especially out longer distances, because he is not allowing his non dominant hand to control the weapon. That grips his dominant hand is the only controlling the weapon, which is going to cause some major inaccuracies. You know, visualize your shots. I mean, this is kind of this is getting in the mental rehearsals. This is things we need to visualize. I always tell people, you know, when you come to the range, what were you thinking? What was the idea of today's range time? Was it just come to put rounds down range and blast away? Well, there's times for that i guess some people do it they just want to take some stress away and they want to come back and blast 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 but how many of you are really planning out your range time planning out your time you know visualizing each thing you plan to do to become more proficient with a pistol you know you know and this is a job if you think about it you know most people don't most people didn't grow up shooting most people didn't grow up becoming a better shooter by just winging it. You've got to spend time doing it and rehearsing and the process, improving your focus, you know, visualizing everything you need to do and, you know, get those drills that really going to embed you in becoming a better shooter. You know, the grip, the stance, the trigger control, the sight picture, the side alignment, tip of the finger, coat, slowly pressing it all. Then we talk foundation, foundation, foundation. But we got to visualize the shot before you take it. Mainly rehearse the product, improve your focus, and just find out what's happening. Why is it happening? The, the, there's a full chapter in the book that I had, that we made, on what's causing it, each little part of it, and then we talked about how to fix it. And there's all kinds of stuff on how to fix it as well, which is kind of a cool little, cool little deal. And I did not mention to you, but if anybody purchases one of those books, we're going to do a full shout out 
as well as put your name in a hat for some of our swag that we are going to give away at the end of the month here. We're going to take all the names of people who bought books and we're going to put your name in a hat and we're going to do some swag stuff for you. Put a bunch of swag together to ship off to a bunch of people. Um, we appreciate you very much for doing that stuff. Not only are you supporting us, you're supporting my family as well. And you get something tangible for it. You know, we have we have memberships that are two ninety nine. People do that all the time, and we appreciate that very much. But this is something we're offering to you uh, to educate yourself, become a better shooter. All right. So number tip number ten number nine tip is to you know get professional training. A lot of people don't have the monetary amount of money. Now, keep in mind, there are a lot of price points on instructors. There are some that do it for very a lot of money. There are some people who cost, you know, very little. You know, I don't think I'm the cheapest guy in town. But for me, I don't need to make all my money on a training class because we are a gun store, gun range, training facility. We have range time. There's a lot of income streams, not including the YouTube income stream, not including the, the books and all the other stuff, the T-shirts and things that we sell on a regular basis. There's a lot of income streams popping into us. So the gun store down the street that does not have a gun range needs to make a little bit more money selling a firearm because they don't have a range inside we i can make a little less on my firearms do the fact that i have range time that people pay for and i have training classes that people pay for and so there's a lot of different things i have to offer which in turn i could charge more for it but at the end of it if i'm treating you with respect and i'm giving you a good price I don't have to fight my competition, if that makes sense. Because you're going to want to come here, and you're going to want to spend the time, and you're going to want to get our services. So that's how I, I, you know. So let's talk about getting professional training. There are a lot of ways to do this. I've mentioned to you before, but there are two major instructor companies that I highly recommend that you look at and you know obviously you know the nra and then we are we are i am a certified nra instructor with multiple credentials and i'm a united states concealed carry association instructor and so is jacob so is heidi so is johnny and one of the young ladies that we have on our calls most of the time natasha we we had them come to us and we did a class and we all got certified over a weekend. We had to do sh class work and training time and shooting time. So we all are certified here. Reason why I'm telling you this, probably the easiest way to find an instructor is hit the NRA or hit the United States Concealed Carry Association and go ahead and hit their find an instructor with a zip code in your area and they'll either have certified instructors that already got training classes available or they'll be able to give you a name of somebody in the area this is where i would start and if you don't have body, anybody in your area any of the gun stores in town that have ranges i'm sure they have some kind of instructor or certified instructor that either works for them or with them to help you get your practice you need. At the end of it, our job as firearms instructors is to make you as comfortable and proficient as possible. My job is not to change you. My job is to help you become more proficient. Move a little bit here change a little bit there. that's when someone comes to me and goes i don't know anything about pistols that's the greatest student in the world because i don't have any bad habits i need to break prior to getting them to be comfortable with a pistol 
you know, compared to someone who's been shooting in his whole life and then comes in and tries to become, become more proficient. We are three steps forward, two steps back, three steps forward, two steps back, because they always pick up something in the past. You're going to fall back to your weakest training when you don't have any training. It becomes pretty easy for us when there's a training thing to break it all the way down and get it out of your head and start you in a new uh, new foundation. It becomes a little more challenging. But the greatest thing ever is even though you spend money on a professional, most of the professionals are going to save you money in the long run. What do I mean by that? Well, a bullet, you know, 9 millimeters, 28 cents around. Let's look at your last training class you did last time you went to the range. Let's say you shot 150 rounds or 200 rounds. 200 rounds for us, uh, they're 28 cents. So it's 20, so let's say there's $28 for 100. So there is uh, about 60 bucks, 59, 58, $59, right? And let's say you were, let's be good. Let's say you were 60% accurate, right? 60 is passing. But what if an instructor could make you 85 to 90%? Today, those nine students we talked about today, at 10 feet, six inch paper plate, we were. Solid. There was no there was no bad rounds. They all hit the paper plate. And that has to do with us getting them to run the foundation to be comfortable. Now, obviously, as we get further back and further back, we gotta really be proficient. Now, I'm not bragging, I'm just telling these guys if they pay attention to what they're doing and press the trigger, which we help them tremendously in this, you can be at 80, 85, 90% accuracy. So you don't need to shoot 200 rounds. You know, realistically, in my opinion, if you're shooting over 100 rounds at the range, you are you're picking up some bad habits. Because you think about this. If I'm having you, let's go golfing, right? When you shoot 18 holes. When we go in the clubhouse and they give us another 18. Do you think we're going to shoot better than the first 18? The answer is no, you're not going to. So that's kind of what I will tell you. Trick number one, tip number one would be five shots at a time. Even though the magazine will hold 15, what's it matter? You don't need to put 15 rounds in the gun. Just shoot the five, assess what's going on, make sure you make your adjustments, load the magazine, shoot five more. Take your time. This isn't a race, right? In a real world situation, we don't have accuracy. We don't have sights. We don't have anything. We're just pointing and shooting. But we need to get comfortable with the weapon, and an instructor will get you there without crossing your arm or leg. Do not get involved in all these big, high, fancy defensive classes until you, like this weekend, we had, that, we had the defensive class. you got to understand your weapon and become proficient enough because when we start moving with a gun, your accuracy rate drops. So let's say you were at 60% accurate. Now we start moving with the gun. What's that make you 40% accurate? So that means all the bullets are now going places you don't want them to go. So it's very important that you get proficient before you go taking any, ta any kind of tactical class. Right? We don't call our classes tactical anyways. We call them enhanced. You know, because we're an indoor range. We don't have this movement like an outdoor place or anything else like that. But we're more intimate, and it makes it a lot easier. We had six people. My wife was in one of them. My uh, Tasha was in another. And then we had four men. And, of course, the women outshot the men. My buddy Tommy was in it. And Tommy's, uh, <clears throat> God, he's, he's probably, he was retired from UPS. And the man cannot miss. I mean, he is a, he impresses me every time we shoot. So I mean, we had a, we were doing we were doing no sights, point shooting, all the way up to thirty feet. Uh, we we we're eleven yards to the backside of our range. We're eleven yards, 
and Tommy was had the thing deep into our metal trap back there. It was not using his sights and was hitting the target and tight. So Tommy spent a lot of time doing that, but that was pretty impressive. But get get trained, guys. I like to tell you, I trained Tommy and told him everything he had. Hey, we've shot a lot together. He's taken a lot of classes with us, uh, but that's a natural thing. There are some people who are just natural shooters, and Tom Tom is one of them. Thank you, Tommy, for being here, buddy. All right, number 10. What is it? Practice, 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 practice. The more you shoot, the better you'll become at addressing and correcting your shotting errors. Tell me last time you went shooting, did you feel a bad shot? Could you tell a bad shot from a good shot? That's all I do in the back all the time when I'm watching somebody. Once I get them shooting. Okay, I said that was a pull. Just Did, did you feel it? And they're, oh, okay, yeah. Because once you start realizing or understanding what's bad and what's good, because a lot of times when we're doing all this stuff, you have no concept. You just, you just want to do it perfect. You just want to do it right. You don't want to get hurt. You don't want anybody to get hurt. And you're just nervous, right? So you just can't feel that pull or that anticipation or that recoil management or that thudding or thumbing the gun or doing all that stuff. You just don't see it until you, until you just do it on a regular basis. And once you do it, then you can start understanding. When it just becomes part of your routine to come in and put 15 rounds and shoot 15 rounds, that's when you start losing. Remember, every time we touch this gun, we're picking up a habit. Make sure it's a good habit, not a bad habit. The more bad habits we have, the harder it is to be, break them. You know, the harder it is to get out of it. Because most people don't think, well, that was a great shot or that was a bad shot. They just think, I'm shooting. And that's the wrong way to think about it. Pick a, pick a drill. If you can't think of drills, guys, my YouTube channel has a full playlist of drills, low round count drills, whether it be a three by five card or a little dot circle or, or anything else like that that are on there to give you time to be proficient and understand what's causing it. The more time we spend becoming more proficient, the easier our confidence gets built, and we're less likely are we going to have the anticipation and the low press and the low recoil management and causing the gun to tip and do all crazy stuff. All right. <clears throat> practice, practice, practice. Practice makes perfect. All right. In conclusion, these 10 tips to help you improve your accuracy and stop those frustrating low and left shots from proper grip to stance, mastering control, mastering trigger control, we've got you covered. Uh, say goodbye to those pesky low and left shots and start hitting your target with confidence. And that magic word with the exclamation point means everything. Confidence. How confident? Comment below. How confident are you if I were to put a paper plate out at 25? Could you hit five out of five? And this is what we did in the drills that, you know, we have to find our defensive accuracy. Think about this. I'm asking you if I put a three by three by five card out there or a six inch paper plate, how confident are you? At three yards. Will all five go in there? Well, good. Then stop practicing at three yards on the three uh, on the on the but if you get back to five, maybe twenty-one, three, five, and seven yards. Now once you get past seven, you gotta really start thinking about it. And you get to seven. Can you get to seven yards? If seven yards and then ten yards, can you get to ten yards? And then after 10 yards, really, should you be shooting at a bad guy with a pistol after 10 yards? And the answer is probably no. Because the chances of you becoming proficient with that gun in a high-stress situation. Remember, as a bad guy, they're not responsible for anything. They don't care. As a good guy with a gun, you're responsible for your bullet until it hits the ground. What it hits, what it hurts, what it beams, what it paralyzes, you're civilly, criminally, morally responsible. Spending the time to be proficient, 
is your responsibility. If you plan to carry a gun for you and your loved ones, which you should, you need to spend enough time behind that weapon to be confident and controllable that you can do what you need to do. Low and left is not what we want. Because unfortunately, if you Kentucky windage, you always shoot low and left, so you shoot high and right to impact the middle of the target. You don't want to do that. Because that one time that you do not pull the trigger or do anything crazy, that's where that bullet's going. And you're pointing that bullet out there in no man's land. All right? I hope that was fun. I hope it answered a lot of questions. I hope it gave you a bunch of stuff to think about. That's all I do about these things. You know, I, you know, we kind of want to help tremendously get you become more proficient with a pistol. But a lot of stuff we do is one of those things uh, will help you become more and more and more uh, proficient and become more confident. And trust me, with confidence comes everything, guys. Let's pop this out of here. All right, beautiful. All right, so let's go up and look at the comments, if you don't mind. I hope you guys enjoyed this this evening. All right, so we talked about uh, that and that. I'm going to put that link up. Let that just so you guys to see it if you want to see it. Okay, Tristan Millers. Uh, good audio. Thank you. Southern Illinois. Awesome. Ralph, right-handed, right-eye dominant. Way to go, Ralph. Hello from Brazil again. Nice, Ralph. That's a couple weeks in a row. Papa Weasel, what's up, buddy? Hey, he's a natural. He's been here for a while. Thank you. John Grimm. I noticed different pistols. Uh, John's saying something here. Let's see what John has to say. I noticed that different pistols have different trigger placements. You're right. Different trigger shapes. Uh, old, so I got to scan in here, zoom in here a little bit. Let's see if I can get it back over here. If I can read it. All right, different shapes. Whichever pistol one chooses, the user preference, but grip and trigger control ensures accuracy. You're beautiful. That's right, man. That's right. I can't believe how terrible my eyes are. But I guess we get the lights off in here. We get these can lights showing. To make me look prettier on the camera, um, but it doesn't help me see in the back side of that. You are 100% there, John Grimm. You know, each pistol has a different thing, and each trigger has a different That's the thing about pistols. You know, we, as a firearms instructor that allows people to shoot pistols before they buy them, and you, you know, how many people will tell you to buy a Glock, Glock, get a Glock, buy a Glock, buy a Glock, Glock, Glock. But Glox has the hardest trigger of all of them, really, because it's a loadable trigger, which means, first of all, it has that trigger safety on the front of it. And if you've never shot one of those, they tend to bing up, they tend to make a crease on the finger. Now, I'm going to tell you a little story. Back in the day, uh, the 43X, when it first came out, everybody was in love with that thing. And I was a Smith & Wesson shield guy. Uh, there was nothing better than a shield to me. And I was the shield seller. And uh, my boss at the time, he goes, "Can you? would you try the Glock to see if it is it? So I took the Glock out. And I said, oh, all right, it's all right. So, you know, I went back to my shield pretty quickly. And uh, <clears throat> so weeks and weeks and weeks went by. And we were selling a shitload of them. We were taking people out. And I had a range at the time, an outdoor range. And we take people out, we let them shoot them, and people were buying them. Then after about three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, we were changing out the trigger to something else because that trigger was causing so much uh, uh, pinchiness to the finger. And I, you know, I used to say, "Well, I'll suck it up, Buttercup. That's that's the gun. You're going to build a callus, and the more you build the callus, uh, the easier it is." This right here on my finger, right here, is my Glock bump. It's a callus I built many years because I would hold that weapon high on the tang, and that some once in a while that Glock would reach up there and bite me, and it wasn't I was holding on to the gun wrong. It's just the way I gripped the Glock 
uh, the angle of that grip, I've never had that happen except for Glocks. So my, I was at a gun show, and a guy had a Glock 43X that he wanted to trade in. Optic ready, MOS, and he wanted to buy something else. So I bought the gun, and I ended up carrying that MOS Glock. While I was at the show, the Glock guy, who puts all the barrels and fanciness into it, I had him, I gave him $250. I said, pretty it up for me, you know, just the hell of it to do it. You know, he put this and he put that and he put this and he put a barrel and he put, you know, the optics and he did this and he put a slide on it. Well, I stopped that thing for about six months and my finger was freaking killing me. Now all those people that I picked on for stuck it up buttercup. That's what I kept saying to myself, suck it up buttercup. Well, I ended up selling to Noah, my, my son's best friend. Because I hated that freaking gun. It hurt my finger so bad. And, uh, you know, so Glocks are one of those weird ones. They have a weird trigger. But, you know, as you get down to it, you got to, it's a user preference thing, like he said. And the grips and everything else, uh, it sure does make a difference when the gun makes that whole, uh, when you put the gun in your hand and it just speaks to you, then it just speaks to you guys. And that's not a gun I could say, well, this gun or that gun or this or this. And we sell a lot of Smiths. I mean, I, you know, I hate to tell you that, but that equalizer, I, I put that against any weapon in the market today. When I see a 74-year-old woman, which happened today, shoot a quarter at five at 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 three yards, nine feet, ten feet, and and be able to shoot a quarter, and she had shot a pistol before, that's not her. That's the pistol, and that's how good that gun is. And as an instructor who sells firearms to seniors on a regular basis, we do a lot of women's. We do a lot of senior shooters, and I could tell you both of those, that husband and wife went home with a pair of those. Uh, didn't need to buy a pair of them, but they went home with a pair of them. Uh, they will not have a problem with those pistols, and they'll be shooting them an awful long time. We buy a gun for 20 years, and her being 70, who or whatever was 72 i think it was uh, uh there ain't going to be 20 years and i tr hate to be rude like that but but in those 20 years she's not going to have any dexterity issues that uh that she needs to go down to something that's going to be easier there's no way a 72 or 73 or 74 year old woman is going to run a revolver the revolvers are easy and simple correct but they got a lot of recoil and the safety on a revolver is that 10-pound trigger pull, which becomes very hard for some women to engage the trigger. Thank you, John Grimm, for making a comment. We appreciate that very much. Uh, you are the best, my friend. Natasha was at the show. Yes, Mom and I are here. Thank you. Um, Natasha is one of our uh, mainstays. She's one of our one of our first uh, members members through our are live here and we appreciate you very much uh kenny morris from cape coral thank you kenny glad you're on the on the uh live tonight thank you very much kenny have you been in the store before sir have you been here to shoot if not make sure you contact us we'd love to have you buddy uh, we're open seven days a week for range time monday through thursday from one o'clock to close and then from Saturday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, it's range time all day. Come see us, my friend. Mention that you were on the live, and we'll help you out. All right, give you a little bit of a give you a little bit of a break. Come shoot with us, my friend. Ah, Skywalker, thank you, sir. Thank you. Give me that smiley face. We appreciate that. Uh, T.J. Meyer, oh, thank you, T.J. I'm thinking about buying your book. Perhaps my wife. Will listen to you because she doesn't always listen to me when it comes to shooting. <laughs> that is true, my friend. That is true. Let me tell you, your wife's probably seen you do some stupid ass shit, and she just wants you to teach you to shoot a gun. <laughs> I'm picking on you, TJ. I'm picking on you, buddy. It's a lot easier for me to tell her than it is for you, my friend. You know, obviously, we love our women. We love our, our wives, our second, our better halves. Uh, my world would be nothing without her. 
she gave me two beautiful kids. Uh, but there's certain things we just can't do together. Uh, I I'm I'm very help I'm very happy. Shooting is not one of them. She is an excellent shot. She was, shoots really really well, and uh, I was lucky enough to get to train her with a bunch of women in the old range. And I didn't tell any of the women she was my wife, so we kind of she was able to do the class. Uh, not being my wife, so it was kind of a nice little deal there, you know. Um, but definitely would uh, benefit TJ her either taking a class with us or the two of you taking a class together uh, would be ideal, you know. Because for women, it's it's she just wants to be confident, and the more confident she is with the weapon, the easier it is. Thank you, TJ. Appreciate it very much. The link will be in our uh, description of this live here, and it will be in any of our YouTube links. There is a they just click the book itself in the shop down below any of our any of our videos. It'll be there as well, and we appreciate you there. Anybody who purchases a book will get a shout out from us at the end of the month. We'll put every name in a hat, and we'll pull out some. Swag stuff that we're going to send you guys. Uh, thanks, TJ. Appreciate that. TJ said, great video. Thanks, John. We appreciate you very much. Kenny Morse, thank you. Appreciate that. Agree. Should have the ability to live, to defend themselves. Yeah, yeah. Uh, John, he agreed that everyone should have the ability to defend themselves. And the equalizer is a fantastic pistol. You are correct there, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Well, we went overboard this year, this this week. One hundred, we're an hour and sixteen minutes in. I apologize about that. I'm glad I get talking on this stuff. I don't know if it comes across as my passion, um, but uh, uh, it, it is a true passion of mine. I love I love teaching students. You know the whole. Running the business thing is fun, you know. You know, eating peanut butter and jelly once in a while when I'm when I'm not making all the money I need to make. I, I I don't complain about that because I'm in love with what I do, um, and I hope it shows. You know, as a firearms instructor, my job is to build your guys's confidence to the point of. That you're not going to have any issues, or you're not going to run into anything. And then, you know, as like TJ's talking and everything else, your job, guys, is to work together as a husband and wife, or husband and husband, or a wife and a wife. I don't really care about all that stuff. Uh, your job is to be your first line of defense. You know, I say it all the time. It's in every tagline. It's been I've been talking that crap my whole life. You know. God bless, be safe, and remember you are your first line of defense because it is your job. It isn't some cop's job to save your life. You know, that whole week after that hurricane when there's no lights on and it's dark as hell outside and you don't have a firearm to defend yourself, you surely wish you had one. And we sold a bunch of them after that. But realistically, just buying a gun is not the answer. It's becoming the proficiency it's become the best you can be that's why these youtube channels and the videos and the books and all that stuff you can't get to me all that stuff's for free except the book and for 9.99 i mean come on that's pretty reasonable pretty reasonable you know it's a good read and it's core it's backed up with the videos we talked about on a regular basis over 10 thousand subscribers have the same problem in seven but well, i think jake and i got to there's six or seven thousand comments between the six or seven videos in regards to questioning why and how and how can i stop it what can i do you know it's hard to read a book and say yes this is what's going to cause the problem it's you know, people learn three ways, and I've learned this multiple times as a firearms instructor in the back of the room here. I'm always asking the student, does this make sense to you? Because some people learn 
by doing, by hands on, right? Some people can take the instructions, read it, and do it. And somehow, some people have to do all of it. They have to do it, they have to read it, they have to see it. And that's what the cool thing about the book's going to be. And the books, I keep saying books, because we're going to do one on grip, we're going to do one on stance, we're going to do one on sight picture, I'm going to do one on sight alignment. It's hard to break them down, but there's such a science to each piece of this. It's the, you know, pizza is made, like this fat guy talking about food now, but the pizza is made in a circle and all the stuff's put on the top of the circle and it's cut in sections where you can consume it. You're not going to be able to consume the pizza if it isn't cut. Right? So the idea of this is we're going to cut the pizza. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, we're going to have pizza tonight. I'm, I'm already telling you that. We're having pizza. My wife's back there. So you're going to consume the pizza as long as it's cut properly. And none of this square shit, right? You, it's a triangle. You shoot, you, you cut pizzas at a triangle. But the concept more than anything else, so we cut the pizza in little pieces. We're able to consume it a lot better. All right. It's been a great one, guys. I, I love you guys very much. Um, we, I think we're going to end it there. Oh, TJ said you're on spot, John. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate that, TJ. We'll go up top here. Say goodbye to everybody. Todd Tristan, appreciate you very much, buddy. Southern Illinois. Ralph from Brazil, thank you very much. Papa Weasel, always, buddy. You've been, you, you've been a loyal one. John Grimm, thank you, my friend. Tasha and Tasha's mama, hope you're doing well, mama. Tasha's uh, a, a great, great student. She gardens, she gyms. And she guns. That's her little deal there. Uh, one of the lives many months ago we did was women women only live. And Tasha was there for that. Uh, Kenny Morris, thank you. Skywalker, thank you. TJ Myers, thank you very much. Um, John Graham. And Ralph, many thanks, John. God bless you guys. Have a great evening. Get to the range, get out shooting, get a chance to purchase this book. Help us out tremendously. Do not forget Aura. Aura is giving you that 14-day trial. Guys, it costs you very little. Think about the one out of four are going to have some kind of online threat that we're not going to be able to solve by ourselves. And it happens on a regular day. They, they can protect your social security number. They can protect all of your software. It's a pretty easy thing to do. And it's very economical. And those are great things. And they sponsor us in these videos. So to help us out, if you'll sponsor, do, one of this, do one of these things, it tremendously supports them. And they step out and reach out to us as, as uh, businesses and allow us to fund some of these videos, which helps us out tremendously. Until next time, guys, God bless, be safe, and remember, you are your first line of defense. Outro video coming. Love you guys. See you next week.